So welcome to this series of uh, Greg Hjorth's Memorable Games. Uh, the first game I'd like to look at today is a game between a 14-year-old Greg Hjorth and Larry Muse that played in the Australian Championship in 1978. Uh, that tournament was played in Perth in Western Australia. There was some controversy over allowing Greg Hjorth to enter. He was well below the required rating for this tournament, but uh, pressure from the influential Melbourne lobby uh, convinced them that he, along with some other juniors, including myself, Daryl Johansson, uh, should be allowed to compete. Um, and Hjort certainly justified his place in the tournament. Uh, he didn't please the arbiter all that often. He was quite a talkative young 14-year-old, so at one point uh, the arbiter, who was a former uh, army officer in the British Army, a guy called Russell Looker, uh, he got fed up with uh, Greg jumping up from his board, so eventually he uh, built a cage of chairs around Greg's board to make sure Greg didn't move from his table and uh, Greg wasn't allowed to, to leave the board until he'd finished. Of course that also trapped his opponent in but uh, the Russell Looker didn't seem to mind. Uh, this, this was his method of disciplining a, a young Greg Hjorth. Uh, this game was played in round nine. Hjorth had already well and truly justified his presence in the, the tournament uh, but he was playing the second youngest player in the field, Larry Muser. Uh, who was a player who came over from America, was living in Western Australia for a short period, now back in Nevada, and uh, one of the top players uh, in Nevada nowadays. But, uh, well, Hjorth was the, n not the favourite for the game in rating, but certainly uh, his Melbourne colleagues thought that he, he should beat Musa, and, and the game turned out to be quite exciting. So it started with... Uh, uh, the Mora Gambit, d4 takes c3, which already was quite a brave choice by Hjorth because the Mora Gambit, or Smith Mora as it was known back in the 1970s, had completely gone out of fashion after Ken Smith had used it in a, a big Grandmaster tournament in San Antonio in Texas, uh, been beaten game after game with the white pieces by t some of the top players in the world, and it just looked as if the Mora Gambit lost a pawn for nothing. So, but so uh, Greg was always happy to give up a pawn uh, in the opening. He, he really favoured the initiative. And in this case, Musa decides just to transpose to a line which uh, is from the c3 Sicilian. So instead of taking on c3, he played knight f6, and after e5, knight d5. Now, knight f3 or queen takes d4 are all the main lines that uh, white can play, uh, or c takes d4 for that matter but bishop c4 had gone out of fashion a little because of this move queen c7 by Musa. Uh, now if bishop takes knight on d5, then queen takes e5, check is winning. So white has to guard the pawn on, on e5 as well as the bishop. The only move that does that is queen e2, and now after knight b6, bishop b3, black can play d3 here, and this is probably the most accurate move. Uh, Musa played knight c6 in fact. After d3, queen e4, instead of playing a move like knight c6, black does have the option of queen c6, which is very annoying for white uh, because the g2 pawn hangs in some lines. However, um, Musa played knight c6, knight f3, and then d3. And after queen e4, there are slightly fewer options here for black. Uh, the, the main ones are d6 or d5. And they're probably what uh, black should play out. For example, d6 you can take, the queen will take on d6. It's not simple for white to get the pawn back on d3. He probably will, but black should, with uh, that extra time that white has to spend taking it, have a, a good initiative. But instead, Musa went knight a5, which hasn't got a great reputation. It gets the bishop pair, but uh, it allows white to take on d3, equalise material, and after knight takes b3, a takes b3, the danger for black is that he's a little bit behind him in, uh, in development. So e6 was played, knight a3, threatening knight b5, stopped with a6, and now bishop e3. And, uh, okay, black develops, bishop e7, white castles. And here Musa makes what may be, a, maybe not a fatal error, but a very, very serious one. He probably should just castle here, though uh, he has... He has a few other options, but what he did with knight d5, it looks attractive, but it allows white to play knight b5 because the rook on a8 is no longer protected. Now the black queen has to move, and then white plays knight d6. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Black cannot take that pawn on d6 because c4 will win a piece. Uh, he took the bishop on e3. White has to take back with the pawn. And again, it's the development uh, problems for black that are, are really a worry. Now here, black 
doesn't have too many options. He probably has to castle here and hope for the best. Obviously, knight g5 is going to be strong then, but it's not absolutely decisive. But Musa decided to stop the white knight coming to e5 or g5 by playing f6. Um, so rook a d1 protecting that pawn on d6 and b6 preparing to uh, develop the bishop. And here Hjorth came up with an absolutely uh, brilliant concept. It, it really looks like white should have some way of crashing through, but black's pawn barrier is quite strong. And here Hjorth came up with knight g5. Now, it, it looks pretty good. Obviously black doesn't have to take the knight, but if he allows knight takes h7, then there'll be queen g6 check later. And, and things will be bad. So perhaps bishop b7 and knight h7 f5 is hanging on, but it's certainly very, very nice for white. Instead, he took on g5, and here's where Hjorth's incredible idea came into play. Because instead of playing obvious moves like queen d4 or queen e4, he played queen c2. Now, queen c2 has a threat of queen f2, and then queen f7, and then queen f8, so setting up a mating attack. It looks as if black can squirm out with king d8, but then the reason the queen went back to c2 and not to e2, for example, comes in the form of queen takes h7. And uh, you can't take the queen because of rook f8, mate, and if you move your rook, say, to e8, then queen takes g7 and rook f8 is going to mate you anyway. So uh, Musa resigned here. The, the, the whole combination with knight g5 and then queen c2, followed by queen takes h7, uh, very much reminds me of a, a famous Lloyd, uh, Sam Lloyd puzzle uh, called She Stoops to Conquer, going backwards in order to go forwards, but uh, to come up with that in, in a, a real game uh, is quite impressive. Um, in, now in the modern era, the computer shows you that actually after uh, Queen E4, Bishop B7, Queen E5, White has a winning attack anyway, but by far the most beautiful method was the one chose by, chosen by Hjorth, and, uh, and he won this game against Musa. So, uh, Queen Sacrifice was just the icing on the cake, but very impressive the way Black never managed to get developed. So, that, that was Hjorth's uh, ninth round win from the Australian Championship in Perth. That's the way the professional.